management is utilizing your environment and your tools and a plan and how to manage the dog's behaviors. Okay, so as we jump in here, again, this is before we start doing our hands-on training, you've got to take a look at, I'll give you a common example, and then you've got to plug your dog into these situations. A lot of times people's dogs struggle with like dogs walking, like dogs walking past or squirrels playing, and then I get to the house and we're going over, you know, what their schedules are, who's taking care of the dog. And they say, well, you know, we, we go out in the morning, we do our thing, and I come back in, and then people have this nice little ottoman right here, right next to the picture window looking out the front door, or looking out the, the living room. And they say, and then after that, the dog loves to sit right here and watch all the squirrels and all the people and bark at the window. Isn't it great? It's like entertainment. And, and what you've actually done is you've given the dog the job of watching and, and reacting to everything that's going on outside of your door, outside of the house. So what do you think is going to happen when you get out there? Well, hey, now it's my shot, right? I'm out here now. There, I've been telling you guys forever, stop running through the yard. So management would be, okay, if we want to improve that behavior, let's put a baby gate up that keeps the dog out of the living room and off. You know what I love the most? The, the spot on the back of the couch. Like little dogs, they'll like post up on the... Oh, that's his spot. Like, well, of course he's gonna think he's running the whole show and keeping an eye on everything. You've kind of served that up to him. And when people start changing their habits a little bit with that is when I point out that they're actually, that doing that is actually adding stress to the dog. It's adding a responsibility to the dog to be on lookout all the time. So you think it's comfy and cute because he's up there? Really, you're saying, okay, buddy, you're, you're up, and they do it all day. And that, that can really be stressful. So a crate, a baby gate, a door, things of that nature. Oh, yeah, I've got a beautiful list right there. <laughs> uh, fences. So those are kind of the obvious ones. Uh, the leash. Another good example, you have a, a, a younger dog that struggles when people come to your front door, right? Very, very common. The front door, if you notice, we've actually made this kind of like a living room area, and then I put this in. I was waiting for the right time to use it, right? The indoor doorbell, because this it's a very common situation. So management would help us understand if someone comes to the front door we could put a leash on the dog and maybe stand back here and have your spouse or your kids open the door you're managing the dog's behavior by restricting its access to rushing over to the door making sense so if this is not a lifelong sentence you know you don't have to do this forever but while the dog's in training or while you're teaching the dog, you don't want them to go have the habit, develop the habit of when that doorbell goes off, it is like a circus. There's people and talking and jumping and, oh, look, they're pushing me. And we're <laughs> this is people like, yep, yep, that sounds about right. So if you're doing it by yourself, an excellent little hack, dog training hack, we have something called a back tie. We've installed types of hooks around our facility, a carabiner, whatever. You don't have to do that. You don't have to drill into your walls. You could take a standard leash with a handle, like they all have that little handle on the end. You put it around your doorknob and you close your door. The dog is now back tied and now I could go answer my own door. Okay, making sense? Smart. You, you, we've got to, we're not going to out muscle the dogs and we're not going to outrun them but we can outthink them. We have been blessed with that ability to strategize and to contemplate. Dogs don't have that, right? They react. So management is thinking ahead. If you have a dog that's potentially dangerous in the backyard, you have to have a long line, a fence. You cannot hope that the dog doesn't do something wrong. You act proactively to prevent things from happening. Again, 
people say, oh, I don't mind. It's just a puppy. You know, he's jumping all over everybody. And it doesn't, like, you know, it's like that mentality of not minding. And, like, and I tell people, I'm like, it's up to you. You know, if you want to give the dog six months of developing a bad habit, I'm still going to come in to the situation and fix it. But it's going to be harder on the dog. And then, again, people jump on board. Because I know how people think, oh, it's a, he's just my little buddy. You know, I don't want to tie him up over there. So basically, when you're dealing with a situation where the dog is doing something that would just be considered inappropriate from a greeting perspective, like there's a, there's a threshold that is appropriate and that is not, then sometimes too much is too much. And the question is, can we correct the dog for that? How we correct the dog is going to be up to us on an individual basis, depending on where the dog is in the training and what tools they've been introduced to. But the answer to your question is absolutely. You can absolutely correct a dog for having too heightened of an energy level or too excited or doing something inappropriate when somebody comes over. The caveat to this is you have to take the time to make sure the dog understands what a correction is.